Hey chickens! I just got back from the library and I am very excited to show you some of the books that I got. But first I wanted to talk to you about a couple of books that I read recently that I am completely jazzed about. So the first one is called The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. She wrote another book called Broken Monsters which was incredible. It was supernatural but it was also very gritty. But The Shining Girls is about a time-traveling serial killer who originates in the, in the 30s, but then he manages to travel through time and murders a bunch of women across the span of like five decades. One of the girls that he tries to murder uh, is a college student named Kirby, and he doesn't realize it, but she survives the murder, and then she goes and tries to solve her own attempted murder. She hooks up with uh, this reporter who takes her on as an intern and he's helping her try and solve this murder. All of these clues keep coming into her lap and she's doing a lot of, she's doing a lot of really good research, but she can't put together the clues because of course nobody suspects time travel. I am loving this book. I'm not actually done with it yet, but I, I want to recommend it because I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, huge trigger warning, however, because there is some violence against animals. I always appreciate having that warning because I hate it whenever animals in books get hurt because I think that it's a cheap device that authors use. It's really effective. It really hurt my feelings, um, but the rest of the book is really, really good. I did have to speed read through two chapters just because of how upsetting it was, the, the violence towards animals. I am completely digging it and I cannot wait to find out how this girl is going to solve this murder. One of the things that I really love is how diverse this book is in the way that its characters are written. Um, each of the women who get murdered, the murderer always visits them twice. And so the first time establishes who the character is and each one is so distinct and just such a good, fun person to read about. And then the second time he visits them, he murders them. But I am really loving it, and I do recommend it, and I cannot wait to finish it. The next book that I want to talk to you about is called My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I've read a couple of his other books, including Horror Store, which is about a haunted Ikea. I think he's a really fun writer. I really loved My Best Friend's Exorcism. The cover alone just made me want to read it, because it looks like an old-school VHS. Uh, it even says VHS on it. It has this fun little fake sticker that says, Be kind, please rewind. I remember when videos used to have that on them. Uh, the back has this old school looking like a scene out of a horror movie. So I really loved this book. It's about two girls, uh, Abby and Gretchen. Abby is um, on a scholarship to a private school. She attends it with Gretchen and they've been best friends since elementary school. But then one night, whenever they're at a friend's house having a sleepover, Gretchen goes into the woods and then she's missing for 24 hours. And when she comes out again, she's completely changed. Gretchen starts changing and behaving differently to the people around her. She cuts out Abby completely. She starts trying to engineer situations where their other friends uh, will also wind up having their lives completely destroyed. It's an incredible book. The imagery is pretty gruesome. I loved it as a horror novel, but I also loved it because Abby's reaction to everything that Gretchen does comes from a place of concern as her best friend. I absolutely loved Abby as a character. It reminded me of whenever I was 13 and I had a best friend and she and I would stay the night at each other's houses every single weekend and we spent every waking moment that we could together and we would dress alike and listen to the same music, we would read the same books, watch the same movies, and it just, his writing brought back this memory of being able to completely devote yourself to one other person like that, non-romantically, as a friend at that age. Uh, it was definitely a nostalgic read for me. The ending of this book also hit completely differently than most horror reads. Most horror reads, I'll, I'll put it down, let it simmer. This one, I, I put it down, I was like, okay, that book's over, moving on. And then it wasn't until a few days later that the impact of the ending completely hit me. And I love the themes of friendship. I love the horror in this book. I loved how creepy it was. And at the same time, it was so heartfelt and so earnest. I a thousand percent recommend My Best Friend's Exorcism. 
So these next books I haven't read yet. I just got them from the library today, but I am really excited about them. So we've got The Last Checkmate by Gabrielle Saab, and the cover reminded me, sorry that that's shiny, the cover reminded me of The Queen's Gambit is about a girl who is taken into Auschwitz. She is Polish, she's about 14 years old, and once she gets there, she has to play chess for her life. And if that premise doesn't just make you lose your mind, I don't know what. I'm about 80 pages in. I started it as soon as I got home. And it is gripping, and it is devastating, and it is tragic, but it's also incredibly hopeful. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one. The next book that I got from the library is called The Ghost Sequences. And it's a book of short stories uh, that I picked up. Number one, the cover is just amazing. Uh, the way that these women with tarot cards form into a skull. I love how spooky it looks. I love books of short stories. I think it's great if you don't have a lot of time to read because you can just pick it up, go through one, and then have something to think about the rest of the day. Uh, I'm also really excited because I've been in a spooky mood lately, even though it is December. Uh, Halloween is year-round, and sometimes you want to sit and read a book that's going to make you a little bit scared. Speaking of spooky, uh, this other book I actually had to put on hold and go pick it up. It's called Nothing But Blackened Teeth. Uh, I don't know if I can show you the cover just because it is kind of scary, but it is by Cassandra Kaw. It's a, a haunted house story about a group of friends staying in a house that legend tells was built on the bones of a dead bride. And it starts off like any haunted house story. They go in and they're going to have a you know good time and look around and see if anything happens. And it looks scary. But I am very invested in figuring out how this particular haunted house story is going to go. So this next book is called Cackle by Rachel Harrison. And again, sorry for the shiny, but this cover looks amazing. It's supposed to be this really witchy read. The main character's name is Annie. She makes friends with a woman named Sophie. And Sophie tells her all of these great things like, Hey, stop apologizing for yourself. Stop living the life that you don't want to live. There are some uncanny things about Sophie, and and, and as far as I can tell, uh, Annie's along for the ride, but but it's possible that Sophie's a witch, and she's going to teach Annie how to be a witch, and honestly, I'm down with that. That's the kind of book that I want to read on a light afternoon. I did pick up a fun little sci-fi romp called Tell the Machine Goodnight. It is by Katie Williams, and once again, sorry for Shiny. Uh, but it's a book about a woman who works for an agency that you can call into and give them some of your information and then they will write you a prescription for things to do in your life to make you happy. On the very first page, which is as far as I've read, a man calls into the agency and the main character tells him to eat tangerines every day and to work at a desk that gets morning light and to amputate the first digit of his pointer finger on his right hand. And from there I was hooked. It seems bizarre and a little out there, and it also seems very lighthearted, but in kind of a subtly creepy way. I also saw something really cool today, and I managed to get it on video, and I can't believe that I managed to get it, uh, but I'm going to show it to you. It's my cat trying to play with a squirrel through a window. The last book that I picked up at the library, I'm probably most excited for this because it looks creepy, but also empowering. This one is called Slewfoot by Braum, 
Once again, sorry it's shiny, uh, but the cover work just looks so creepy and fun. It is a tale of bewitchery. Um, evidently, the author, Brom, also does paintings, and he, the, the book includes some of his paintings, and it's incredibly, he's incredibly talented. The artwork and the imagery in this book are creepy and fun, and it just looks so immersive, like it's going to add to the story. Every chapter has a, a different uh, illustration at the heading, and just look at how creepy that is. I love it, and I'm just getting into it. Uh, the paintings that are done by the author are in the very center. I'm only going to show you a couple of them. He seems to be incredibly talented. Um, this is just absolutely intriguing to me. Uh, I love any sort of multimedia endeavor where you, where you not only get a really good story, but you also get these illustrations that are just mind-blowing. And this is the aesthetic that I'm actually really into. Uh, I love creepy things. I love feeling scared, or I love stories about people uh, dabbling in witchcraft. I love witchy things. I think that I'm going to have a really good time with it. So that's it. I just went to the library and I got really excited and wanted to tell you all about it. So if you're not into books, that's also fine. I do recommend that people go to their local libraries because everything there is for free. And I know that times are tough. Uh, but I, I also just think that it's a really good way to enrich yourself. I think that they help enrich communities. And I enjoy my local library and I do recommend going and checking them out because they don't just have dusty old books from the 40s. They get new books all of the time, every single library. My library has a system, uh, because they have separate branches, you can go online and place a hold on a farther away branch and they'll put it on hold and they'll bring it to whatever branch is closest to you and then you can just go pick it up whenever it's convenient. Uh, I also know that most library systems have done away with uh, late fees. Mine does automatic renewals. If I forget to renew them or return them, I'll just get an email saying that my books were automatically renewed. Uh, so I don't know why this became a PSA for the library, but it's something that I'm passionate about and if you haven't checked yours out lately, go see what they've got going on.